two faulty Amiga floppy drives. This one comes out of an Amiga 500, I believe. I picked this up from eBay recently, sold as spares or repairs. Only costs $3.99 plus postage. So it will be interesting to see if we can get it up and running again because a working drive, it is worth quite a bit more than that. This one though, this one I believe is out of a 1200. Not mine, this one belongs to a viewer. May have sent it in because they had to go at refurbishing the drive themselves, but can't get it to read any discs. So I have no idea what could possibly be wrong with these. I do have my suspicions about this one though. And so I think we'll start with that one. Let's see if we can figure out why it's not working. So this drive is a Shinon model number FZ-354. As I say, I believe this is out of a 1200. Although a similar shape and size drive would also have been used in the 600. Getting into this should be relatively straightforward. I think this top section should just unclip. I think it'll come out at those positions there on either side and there is that clip there on the back. Yep, that was really easy. And my suspicions for what may be wrong with this, well, speaking to the person who owns it, supposedly they had it in bits while trying to service it. It does look very clean in here, but my suspicion for why this isn't working is that when this was taken apart, potentially the track zero position sensor, well, that's been moved. And I don't know if it'll come across on camera or not, but you can see just around the base of that screw that holds this board in place. There's the sensor there, sits on the bottom of that board. But there's glue on that from the factory. That's because these are set and they're never supposed to be moved. So if you are going to be working on a floppy drive, yeah, by all means, take it to bits to clean it. Do not move that. And one telltale may be if this screw, yeah, that unscrews really easily, making me think that's been undone before cracking the glue before and you can see if I loosen that you can see that that has quite a bit of movement in it. If that isn't set to the correct location this drive will struggle to read discs. So it may be just that but the stepper motor itself that is also factory set in position you can see glue around that screw there although it doesn't actually look as if that has been out the glue on that screw doesn't look as if it's broken and if I try to unscrew it yeah that is putting up quite the fight so I don't think that's been out before. There are various other points around the drive as well that do have evidence of that glue on the stepper motor arm that comes across to the heads well it's on that but also on the heads itself on the top head there there's two screws and it's hard to tell but those screws look like someone's had a go at them with a screwdriver there is a little bit of damage to the screw head and indeed the glue around them yeah that looks as if it's cracked as well let me just test these yeah they unscrew quite easily so it may be the case that the owner of this had the heads out again if you're going to be working on one of these drives do not do that. There really is no need to do that. If you are trying to service one of these, all you need is a bit of IPA on a cotton bud. You can gently lift up the heads just to separate them. Obviously they will be separated anyway, but you can lift them a bit just to get you in there. And then you're just going to go back and forward on the head just to clean up. Obviously there is two heads, the bottom head and the top head. You want to do both of them. That is really all you need to do to those. You don't need to remove them. But as I say, it's not working. Or well, I've been told it's not working. So let me grab my 1200 and we'll test it in that. Now this drive that's in my 1200, that's actually not the original drive. My original drive did die many years ago, long before I started doing this YouTube stuff or started working on these machines. So at that time, I just binned the drive that was in here. 
And this drive, this actually came out of an external disk drive enclosure. One of these things. And so for the purposes of testing the other drive today, I think what we'll do is just make use of this. Just so that we do have a good working drive on the Amiga as well at the same time as trying to test this. Okay, I'm just going to use my Amiga test kit disk. I actually have Amiga test kit installed on the hard drive of this 1200. Well, I say installed on it. All you got to do is take the disk and copy the executable off this onto your hard drive and run it from there, should you wish. But in the first instance, let's just stick this in here and see what it does. The Mega Test Kit 1.2, it seemed to read the disk okay. But we'll not launch it from the floppy drive. Rather, let's just launch it off the hard drive. Then we can go into the floppy drive, select DF1, and let's take a look at the head calibration. Because I suspect that's where we'll find the problem. And yeah, straight away, look at that. The lower head. It's mostly reading OK there at cylinder zero, but the upper head, it is doing nothing. Let's just take that to the middle of the disc. So we'll go forward 40 cylinders. This time the lower head is fine, getting 11 out of 11. The upper head though, again, it's not doing very much. And if we move towards the end of the disc, yeah, again, Upper head doing practically nothing, although the lower head that does seem to be good. So how are we going to adjust this? So we know there are two things that are possibly out of adjustment here. The track zero position sensor and the actual head itself, because those two screws on the glue points, those have been cracked. And the glue point here on this one, that's been cracked. Those screws have been out before. So let's start with this one. Yes, the drive is still running here. We'll have to do this with the drive active. I'm going to push that to its extreme in one position. Tighten the screw again. Um, let's just force a mega test kit to do a seek. Yeah, you can see now with me doing that, the lower head, that is completely out of alignment, so let me try and adjust that back again. Try and put it somewhere in the middle there. And in fact, if we look very closely at the glue that is on this, you may not be able to see it on camera very well, but there is a bit of a ridge in the glue just at this point. And then the glue on the screw sort of stops back there. So that makes me think, I just loosen that again slightly and we just give that tiniest movement there. Daily what we're trying to do here is just move everything back into its original location. Yeah, the ridge of glue coming off the screw going down onto the PCB, it seems to be almost in a straight line now. This is obviously a lot of guesswork involved here, but let's just see what that does. Okay, that has helped a bit, but the lower head still isn't perfect. Well, I've moved to another disc, this old uh, Amiga format demo disc. I just formatted it there on my 1200 drive, the known good drive. And reading that back within this one, those lower heads now, they're fine. There it is there. At cylinder zero, 11 out of 11, all the signals are good. And if we step up through it, The lower head each time, it is fine. There's the middle of the disc, that's all fine. And out towards the end of the disc, that is fine as well. The issue with this one, the one we were using originally, my copy of Amiga test kit, uh, it's this disc, unfortunately. You may not be able to see it on the camera, but just at the start of the disc there, there are what looks like almost grooves in the disc surface. Unfortunately, a lot of my old discs, they just 
don't seem to last anymore. Possibly down to the method of how these were stored. Back in the day when I was finished with my Amiga, like a lot of this stuff, it all just went up in the roof space and it lay up there for many years. Not necessarily a damp environment, it would have been dry, okay, but definitely prone to quite dramatic temperature swings between hot and cold. That's not good for the magnetic surface on these and even out of those discs that do still work it just seems to be the case after multiple uses this disc has had a lot of use after multiple uses the surface of them just seems to break down so this one is for the bin unfortunately but our drive here is now reading fine with this disc on the lower head we do though need to sort out the upper head well it's a new day and let me show you what I figured out about that upper head at the minute there, you can see on the Mega Test Kit, the lower head, it's reading fine, but the upper head, it's doing nothing. But if I carefully manipulate the shaft on the stepper motor here, just to move the head. Well, you can see I've moved it slightly there, and now both heads are doing nothing in terms of cylinder zero. But if I keep going with it, there's the upper head now reading correctly. What I was doing there was rotating that, moving the head carriage forward. So I think what we need to do is loosen off those two screws. Well, first of all, we need to do a seek here, just to put that back to where it was. But then if we loosen off those two screws, I think we could carefully move the upper head forward slightly and hopefully that's all it needs. The tension on the spring on the head there, that has pulled the whole thing over to the side, but let me see if I can get this. Is that maybe too far? Yeah, I think I might have moved it too far there. There we are. Let's carefully tighten it up with that. Just paying attention to the orientation of the head here because we want to try and make sure that that is square as in it's sitting perpendicular to the disc surface. But I think that's sitting okay there at that so let's just tighten it up. Seek forward, 10 cylinders, still reading okay. Another 10, that's good. Yeah, this is looking good. It's 50, 60, 70, we'll go right out to 79. Yeah. That was suspiciously uh, straightforward. Yeah, that does nice seem to be reading correctly. I didn't expect that to be so easy. Um, let's do a read test. And yeah, that looks good. I think we have it sorted. How about we try and load something now on the Amiga using this disk drive? How about Shadow of the Beast? So we put that in there. We'll do a system reset, but I'll also hold down both mouse buttons. That will take us into the early boot menu. We'll go to boot option, select DF1, and tell it to use that device. Of course, that's assuming that this game supports booting from DF1, it may not. And the fact that I can see the access light on over here on DF0 makes me think that game doesn't support that. So let's just try sysinfo. So boot options again, DF1, use boot. And yeah, it does now seem to be booting okay. And there we are, sysinfo. 
drives df1 speed so how fast it is a floppy drive on the Amiga 22,000 bytes per second well almost 23,000 how does that compare to df0 yeah pretty much the same so I'm happy enough with that I think I'm happy to call that drive now good now just before we do close this drive up to send it back to its owner when they were cleaning it previously they've done such a good job that there doesn't really appear to be much in the way of any grease left on the stepper motor or on the rail down in there that the head moves back and forward on so I'm just going to go in with a little bit of silicone grease you may have previously seen me using lithium grease although from some recent conversations with a couple of viewers Lithium grease maybe isn't the best thing for plastics. Granted on the stepper motor itself there, there is no plastic so it would be fine there. But where the heads sit on a reel, well there is plastic involved there so don't want to risk any damage. Silicone grease is supposedly perfectly safe for plastics. I think that will do. And next time all that moves it will just lubricate itself. And I should point out, and in fact I should have pointed this out earlier, but while you just seen me manually adjust this drive using a Mega Test Kit, the correct way to do it, or the more thorough way of doing it I suppose, would be to get a drive alignment disc and use that in conjunction with an oscilloscope to monitor the signals coming off the heads and adjust everything until you know it falls within the required parameters. So this is aligned to the point where it reads a disc. Yes, I could hook up my scope to this and take a look at those signals coming off the drive, but without the alignment diskette, I don't really see the point, to be honest with you. And I did go looking for one such diskette, but they're now commanding 60, 70, 80 pounds on eBay, which, let's be honest, that's just a little bit silly, isn't it, for a floppy disk? So it may not be 100% but it is working again and surely that's enough. That's all we really need isn't it? So let's put the lid back on. And let's take a look at the other one. So this drive being considerably bigger and with a date stamp on it there of 0291 February 1991. This is obviously out of a 500 if not a 500 plus. It is another Shinon drive, model number FB-354. And before we try to test this, or even open it up, one thing that I did notice is if we put a disc in it, well, it just doesn't seem right to me. Yeah, the disc is in there, I suppose, but it just doesn't look to me as if it's sat down properly into the drive. If we try to eject it, you know, it doesn't really spring back out either. So I think in this one there might be something wrong with the loading mechanism. And yeah, that's definitely not right. Because the door on the disc, that's not even being pushed open. And unfortunately the problems do not stop there. But I'm sorry to say that I think this drive is probably beyond repair. I have at least figured out why a disc wasn't loading properly. I have another one here. I've taken it out of its cover as well. And you can see at this point here, there's a little plastic arm just in below this top section. And it is that plastic arm which opens this. So you can see it gets caught by the arm there. And that pushes the disc open as it's being loaded. On this drive though, say the plastic arm is missing. It would sit in that position and pivots on that point. And so that's the reason why the door was not being opened. But we do unfortunately have a further problem. And it may well have been caused by me with my inserting a disc in here without the disc's door being opened. Obviously when that is the case, you're putting a lot of pressure down on the bottom head. And that bottom head, well, it's wrecked. So I'm not sure if I did this. I'm not sure if it came to me like this. Considering it was missing that part out of here, 
Well, I can only assume that somebody has taken that out of here in the past to repair another drive. But why would you take something like that out of a perfectly good working drive? I suspect that this did always have a problem here with that lower head. And someone has just set that in there in the hope that nobody would notice. So this one is very much resigned to the parts bin now. Because let's be honest, the only place I'm going to get another lower head is in another one of these drives. And as I just said, what's the point in taking parts out of another drive that is working fine? You know, there's no point in taking the lower head out of this drive. This drive works fine. Not unless anyone watching has one of these drives that maybe has damage to the upper head. Let me know and I will take what's left of it off you and try to repair this one, try to replace the bottom head. Well, there we are, one Amiga floppy drive aligned and ready to go back to its owner. And another Amiga floppy drive that's now nothing more than a glorified paperweight. I suppose that serves me right for trying to buy something cheaply off eBay, with the intention of trying to fix it up and sell it on for a small profit. This is probably the first time that I've spied something on eBay and thought, I could fix that quite easily and maybe flip it on, make a few pound. But yeah, that's lesson learnt on my part. And I suppose it just goes to confirm that there is absolutely no money to be made in this retro computer hobby. But the most important part today is this drive. This one is working again, so I'll get it boxed up and back off to its owner. And then hopefully they can continue to enjoy their Amiga Games library for many years to come. Now, as I did say earlier, it has been manually aligned. And while it does work, and I have actually further tested this drive off camera, I put it in my 1200 in position DF0 and just ran a few games from there and they all worked fine. But while it is working, I couldn't with any authority say that this is 100% aligned correctly because as I said earlier to do so you really need the proper alignment diskette and hook this up to an oscilloscope. But it is working to the point where it seems to read any disc that I throw at it and surely that's good enough for playing a few old games. So that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed what you've seen. If you did I would appreciate a thumbs up why not hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. Still plenty more yet to come here on CRG and I'll see you next time.